Would I be the a-hole for refusing to raise my brother's kids? When I female 20 was 6, my parents died. And since my brother Alan was of age at 19, he became a legal guardian. He dumped me at a foster home a couple of months after the funeral and disappeared. And that's where I stayed until my aunt found me. He didn't bother reaching out until one day when I was 9 when he brought his 2-year-old daughter to my aunt's house and disappeared again. I'm very close with her. She knows I'm her aunt but we consider each other sisters. When I turned 18, I got access to my trust. I also got a house in Amsterdam, which is where I was born and raised until my parents passed. I traveled to see the house in mid-2022 and I loved it, so I decided to move back there. I didn't want to be separated from Mia, my niece-slash-sister, female 13, so I moved with my whole family, Mia and an uncle. My brother found out I'm back in Amsterdam. He is now poor as he spent all his money on stupid things. He has been reaching out non-stop asking for money, but I ignored him. Then he came to my house with his wife and three children. My brother says it's mean of me to only take care of one of his children and not the rest. I told him to get a job, but he said he has a criminal record and his wife is disabled. He wants a monthly allowance to support his family and to share the house with them as they live poorly. The truth is, I feel nothing for him. He is not my family. Me and my aunt and uncle are. Yesterday, I was out, and my aunt called saying he left his kids outside our house. I don't want them in my house nor my life. I feel nothing for them. Mia is also very uncomfortable with them in the house and says she doesn't want to have to help raise them, and she doesn't consider them siblings. My conscience won't let me abandon them at a foster home like my brother did to me. But my aunt and uncle are now retired and very old, 63 and 64, and aren't able to run after them as they are young kids, 9, 7, and 4. And I also don't want to put my life on hold to raise strangers. The police are looking for my brother and his wife, but if they don't find them, I will look for a nice facility to take them in. I have tried to find it in me to raise them, but I just can't. I cannot imagine putting my life on hold to stay home and play mother with them. Mia doesn't want them in her life either. I retired my aunt and uncle and they spend their days feeding ducks in the park, and it is unfair to them to raise more kids that aren't their own. I've discussed this with my three cousins, kids to my aunt and uncle. Two of them say I have no duty to these kids and my feelings are valid, but one says I'm an a-hole here as it's my duty to step up and raise them, the same way her parents did. So would I be the a-hole if I refused to raise them? Now for the top comments. You're barely an adult with one kid already. I don't think you'll be the a-hole. Your brother is for sure. Especially if she cares for the children. He will just pop out more children and bring them to her. This will never stop. They aren't her responsibility. And she will just resent them since she was forced to care for them in this way by someone she doesn't even have any family bonds anymore. Not the a-hole and OP please call the police if you ever hear from your brother. Maybe give him a, I will give you money, but just if you meet with me one last time to talk, and then if he falls for it, inform the police about it. Not the a-hole. Your aunt and uncle raised his first kid. You didn't agree with raising three kids. As for your cousin who is telling you to raise them, ask that cousin if she would raise them with you. I guarantee she will refuse. However, you, Mia, aunt and uncle should make an effort to be a regular part of their life and be a support system. But it is understandable to not want to slash be able to be guardians for any reason. I've decided I will be a part of their life. Mia said absolutely not, but she's still young and might change her mind. I don't want these kids growing up knowing they had family who could have been there for them and weren't. If my aunt never tracked down my brother and forced him to tell her where he left me, who knows where my life would be. But I'm 20. I'm in uni. I'm taking care of the people who took care of me and I have a teen who's about to enter that rebellious phase. I can't handle them too and it's tearing me apart. I can afford to set aside some money for them and I'll try and visit them monthly, wherever they end up. Maybe when I'm older and have settled down more, I'll bring them in. As for now, I'll settle with them perhaps being in a group home where I can visit them or take them out during the day. I can only hope when they get older they'd understand. Next story. Am I the a-hole for grounding my daughter for leaving her sister with a neighbor? I'm the single mom of three kids, Polly 16 female, Trevor 12 male, and Cassie 8 female. I have little to no support. Their father left after Cassie was born, no family nearby, etc. I have two sitters that I can call on as needed, and I used them before I'd ever ask Polly for help as I don't want her missing out on her teenage years. Before this incident, I only ever asked her to babysit once because I had no one else, and I paid her $15 per hour, above minimum wage at a time. This past Saturday, Polly was due to hang out with some friends. 
For a couple of days, Trevor was ill but testing negative for COVID. That day, he spiked a very high fever, and I had to take him to the ER. I asked Polly to watch Cassie as the sitters weren't responding. I apologized that she'd have to miss out on time with friends, but said I'd pay her and she could even have her friends over our place. Polly pitched a fit and asked why I couldn't send Cassie to the neighbors. We don't know them. They moved in last month and outside waving when we got our mail, I don't have a relationship with them. Polly was irritated, but I told her I'd pay her $18 per hour and that I had to go. I take Trevor to the ER and we have to wait a bit. Polly kept asking if the sitters responded and they hadn't. Eventually, it was our time to be seen, so I told Polly I'd be out of reach for a bit. Turns out, Trevor had a bad case of RSV, and due to pre-existing health problems, had to be admitted for the night. I was terrified. When I called Polly to update her, I heard people talking in the background and said, Oh, you had your friends come over? She told me no. She dropped Cassie at the neighbors and went out. I was furious. I told her to go home and get her sister. I then asked for the neighbor's number. She didn't even ask for it. Which I get teenage logic, but still. At first, Polly refused until I told her she was grounded. I made her face on me when she got home to show that Cassie was with her. Eventually, my mom was able to make a two-hour drive down to stay with the girls, but I told her not to let Polly leave the house. The next day, Trevor and I were able to go home. I lectured Polly about what she did and grounded her for two weeks. She got mad at me and said that I can't expect her to drop her plans. I point out I never do, but this was an emergency, and her brother was sick. She told me that's not her problem. She's also mad because I won't pay her. I apologized profusely to the neighbor who said it was okay, and that he would have called me, but Polly didn't leave my number either. Polly said I overreacted. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Let's get this out of the way. There are a lot of posts on here about forcing teenagers to babysit, and this is most definitely not one of those. This was an extreme situation, emergency even. Polly acted amazingly selfish and irresponsible. She left a young child with strangers and exposed them to an unknown illness as an added bonus. Also, considering how the folks around her were sick, it should be common courtesy slash sense to not want to expose her friends as well. She's old enough to fully comprehend how terrible and dangerous her actions were, but instead doubled down on being petulant. Not my kid, but Polly earned a hefty punishment and consequences. She probably did expose them to an unknown illness which later revealed to be RSV. As someone who was a healthy mid-twenties adult, got RSV last year and ended up in the hospital overnight, she put that family at risk. RSV slash COVID slash other illnesses are highly infectious. Not only did she abandon her little sister in an emergency situation, but she could have landed someone else in the hospital. Not a hole and honestly, I'd never be able to trust Polly again. RSV can kill a kid, so God forbid something happened to your son. I don't know how I'll ever be able to trust her again. I never ask her to babysit as it is, but certainly won't ever again. Which unfortunately means she wins by acting horribly. Not necessarily. Opie, whenever you need a babysitter, have your oldest stay at home too. That should make it clear that teens who do kids off with strangers aren't old enough to be trusted alone, not the a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for giving my step-niece's gift to my niece? My brother remarried a few months ago. His new wife has a daughter, Sarah, who is around the same age as his daughter, Alina. My sister-in-law doesn't have a good job, so Sarah had a pretty tough life. Her birthday was about a week ago, so I decided to buy a laptop for her. I know she needs one for school, and they can't afford one. I explained to Alina that I'm giving Sarah a better gift, not because I love her more, but because Alina has everything she needs and Sarah doesn't. And she understood. At Sarah's birthday, I gave her my gift and she seemed very happy. However, I heard her bragging to Alina, telling her I don't love her. Alina kept telling her to shut up, but she kept going and I was furious. I asked Sarah to give the gift back and gave it to Alina. Her laptop was three years old so she could use a new one. I told my brother that he doesn't dare take this away from my niece. And if he does, then he'd better remember to never ask me for any financial help again, which he does regularly. My sister-in-law got extremely angry and called me an a-hole and said I ruined her daughter's birthday. I told her her daughter ruined her own birthday and this punishment is well-deserved. I will never sit here and watch someone bully my niece. My sister-in-law and her daughter think I'm an a-hole and I believe my brother agrees with them but he doesn't say anything. Tough one. I think I'm going against the grain here by the looks of it. 
I think this probably was effective as far as teaching Sarah not to bully someone in front of a gift giver. But this whole situation is likely going to have caused even more resentment from Sarah towards Alina. I'm not sure that you'll have done either girl any favors as far as their relationship goes in the long run. You went out of your way to provide a very generous and thoughtful gift. You spoke with Alina and saw how understanding she was about the differences and need between herself and Sarah. It doesn't sound like, and do correct me, that Sarah's parents were stepping in to mediate the situation. Your gift was used by Sarah as a tool for bullying, saying Opie doesn't love you and the laptop symbolizes that. I think others are right that it was technically wrong to try to retract a gift that had been given, but seeing as that gift was being used to bully someone who you presumably feel protective over, I struggle to fault you for it. There were probably better solutions, but in the heat of the moment, you've removed the catalyst for bullying essentially. Perhaps it would have been better to keep hold of the laptop, rather than re-gift it in front of Sarah though. How old are your nieces? It sounds like they're of an age when they would understand the gravity of their words. I'm going to go not the a-hole for now, but curious to read more of the other perspectives here. Sarah has some important lessons to learn. Her brother and his wife must help her if they're incompetent parents. Maybe she made a mistake giving it to Alina. She wouldn't have caused any girl-on-girl -girl jealousy if she came back, but it's done. Not the a-hole. It's appalling that Sarah isn't grateful and realized how lucky she is to have a new aunt who cares enough to buy her an expensive gift. The bragging just made it worse. Don't gift her anything good until she's learned her lesson, OP. A lot of YTAs here. That's crazy. Didn't realize that just because her brother got married, she's just supposed to automatically care about these people. She gave the girl a gift. The girl then rubbed the gift in her niece's face to the point of tears. She then took back the gift and gave it to niece. Because why on earth would she want a boy to have a new gift from her? Not the hollow bee. In all honesty, my real niece seems kind of cold but also is true. You don't have to have a familial connection to in-laws. Because that's what they are, in-laws. As in the only thing making you even remotely related is the law. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother's wife that she is a stuck-up witch? Context. This involves me, 25, my brother, 32 male, and his wife, 27 female. When my brother met his wife five years back, all of us were very welcoming. But soon, it was clear that she wasn't at all interested in being part of the family. Over the past five years, she's come to our family get-together like six to seven times. It's always either my brother alone or my brother and my niece, three female. Initially, I would try to make plans with her, but she'd always reject it by saying that she doesn't go out much or that she doesn't like shopping or whatever. On a handful of occasions that she's attended our family gatherings, she's been very reserved and quiet, giving one-word answers or just smiling whenever someone tries to strike up a conversation. Mostly, she makes some excuse and just doesn't show up. Because of this, my brother has also stopped attending the family gatherings as much as before. My parents are very disappointed with this, and my brother's absence makes them visibly upset. I've asked my brother about it and has always maintained that sister-in-law is very introverted and has social anxiety, and that is not going to force her into doing something she doesn't like. Next week is our dad's 70th birthday, and of course my brother and his family are invited. This is supposed to be a grand event with all of our extended family going on a weekend trip. But yesterday, sister-in-law texted me saying that she won't be coming for the trip. The conversation went something like this. Sister-in-law, hey, I'm so sorry, but something urgent has come up and I won't be able to attend the event. Is it gonna be only your brother? Me, at least niece is coming, right? Sister-in-law, oh, I would love for her to attend, but she's saying that she won't attend without me. Me, then why don't you stop being a stuck-up witch for once and attend the event since it would mean a lot to my dad if the entire family was there? Sister-in-law didn't respond after that. A few minutes later, I got a call from my brother and he was furious. He said that the way I talked to his wife was very disrespectful and that he will not be coming for the trip until I apologize. I refused to apologize because I felt this was long overdue. So now brother isn't coming for the trip. My dad thinks I should apologize, but my mom thinks I did the right thing. Am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole. Maybe your sister-in-law doesn't want to hang out with you because you suck. For real. I'm sure sister-in-law gets vibes that they all hate her. I think it's hilarious that Opie posted this thinking they were in the right. Entitled, Narcissistic People Always Think That Way. Info, where was she acting stuck up? Because I don't see it anywhere in this post. She wasn't. I'm pretty sure Opie and her family think she's stuck up because she isn't comfortable hanging out with them. You're the a-hole. 
As your brother said, his wife has social anxiety. You've now further alienated her by calling her a stuck-up witch. I sure as hell wouldn't want to go to a family gathering after being called that. This. Social anxiety can make it difficult to do necessary things, like hold down a job, go grocery shopping, or even send texts or emails. If sister-in-law is expending her energy and trying to live her life and function enough to take care of her family and herself, I'm not at all surprised that she can't attend demanding family events. It's a matter of enable, not unwilling.